We are in section 1.1, Functions. A function is a rule that assigns each object in set A exactly one object in set B. Set A is called the domain of the function and set B is called the range. The domain of a function is going to be different depending on what type of function that we have. And so a polynomial function is going to be all real numbers. And so another way to write this would be saying from negative infinity to positive infinity. Or you can write this special R which symbolizes all real numbers. So you have a couple different options on how you can write this. A rational function is a fraction with a polynomial in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator or a function in the denominator and a function in the, the numerator. And so we're going to just say f of x is equal to, and we'll say n of x over d of x. And this is going to be all real numbers except where our denominator, which we call d of x, is equal to zero. And then an even root function is going to be if we had a function f of x, and we take the nth root of it, and this is going to be even. It's going to be an even number, so 2, 4, 6, and so on. And this is going to be all real numbers. where f of x is greater than or equal to 0. And then also, just a little note here, is an odd root, the domain is all real numbers. The next thing that we have is interval and set builder notation. And whenever you graph an inequality, if you remember, you would put a filled in circle if it was either greater than or less than, and then an open circle if it was less than or greater than, without that line underneath it, including it. And when we write our solutions, we're going to use for that closed interval brackets. And when we write an open interval, we're going to use parentheses. And so we have some different notation down here. And so you can see interval notation, and then also it's called set builder notation. And that tells us what is going on with it. X is our variable. That straight up and down line means such that. So such that. We have some examples right below that say find the domain of each function and write the domain in interval notation or set builder notation. And so for the first one on here, we have f of x equals x cubed minus 4x plus 7. This is a polynomial. So our domain would be all real numbers, or you can say negative infinity to positive infinity. The second example, g of x, is 2x minus 1 over 3 minus 2x, which is a rational function, and we know that our denominator, which is 3 minus 2x, is not allowed to be equal to 0. Solving this, we get 3 is not able to equal 2x, or we can say x is not equal to 3 over 2. And so to write this, in our interval notation, we're going to say it goes from negative infinity to 3 over 2. And we use parentheses on infinities and parentheses because 3 over 2 is not included. Union, 3 over 2, comma, infinity. Or we can write this with our set builder notation with that brace. And then x such that x cannot equal 3 over 2. Part C is h of x equals the square root of 1 minus 3x. And since our root is a 2, they don't put the little 2 on there, but it is an even root. We know that that function, the inside part, 1 minus 3x, has to be greater than or equal to 0. And so then solving this, we have 1 is greater than or equal to 3x. And then dividing both sides by 3, we have 1 third is greater than or equal to x. If you wanted to write it the other way, you definitely could and put the x first. And so for this, it says x is less than or equal to 1 third. 
So it's going to go from negative infinity to one-third. Since we're including one-third, we are going to use a bracket. Set builder notation would have been x such that x is less than or equal to one-third. The example right below says if f of x equals 3x squared minus 5x plus 1, find f of 4. So in order to find f of 4, we need to substitute in 4 every single place that we see an x. And working this out, we get 3 times 16 minus 20 plus 1. 3 times 16 minus 20 plus 1 would be equal to 29. Likewise, we have to find f of negative 2. So substituting in negative 2 every time we see an x. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. Negative 5 times negative 2 would become positive 10 plus 1. And then from here, 12 plus 10 plus 1 would work out to be 23. The last one we have is not substituting a number, it's actually substituting a variable. So we're going to find f of a. So every time we see an x, we put an a. So we're going to have 3a squared minus 5a plus 1. It's as far as we can go on this. On the next page, we have an example that says if c of x equals 2x minus 5, find c of x plus h. So this time we're going to be substituting in not a number and not just a variable, but x plus h, so an actual expression. So c of x plus h is going to equal 2 times x plus h minus 5, which equals 2x plus 2h minus 5, since we can distribute that 2. But we cannot combine any more like terms or simplify any more, so this would be our solution, would just be the 2x plus 2h minus 5. Next thing we discuss is piecewise functions, which is a big idea in calculus. And so this has multiple functions, and each of these functions appears only to a certain interval of the main function's domain. The example right below says if h of x equals and you'll notice it says 6x minus 1, and this is only if x is less than 0, and then 7x plus 3 if x is greater than or equal to 0. Find the following. So for the first one, our value that we have is negative 1, and that is going to be less than 0. And so we'll be looking at the first equation, which is going to be 6x minus 1. And so we're going to go ahead and substitute in negative 1. And so this was the equation that we're looking at. And then working this out, we get negative 6 minus 1 or negative 7. For part B, our value that we're substituting in is 0. And that's actually going to be the second equation that we're looking at. So the one where h of x is equal to 7x plus 3. And that, again, is only when x is greater than or equal to 0. Substituting in 0, we get 7 times 0 plus 3, or 3. Right below this, we have a bunch of definitions that we need to know. First one is the demand function. The demand function d of x for a commodity is the price p equals d of x that must be charged for each unit of a commodity if x units are to be sold or demanded. We also have a supply function, which is going to be called s of x. For a commodity, is the unit price p equals s of x, in which producers are willing to supply x units to the market. The next one that we have is revenue, or r of x. This is obtained by selling x units of a commodity is given by the product. r of x is the number of items sold times the price per item, or the formula down here, which is r of x equals x times p of x. We have a cost function, c of x is the cost of producing x units of that commodity, and then a profit function, which is p of x, is the profit attained by selling x units of the commodity and is given by the difference of revenue minus cost. 
And so definitely formulas to know, little formulas here that are going to be used throughout the semester. And then in addition, we have average cost, average revenue, and average profit. For all of these, you'll notice that we're taking our cost, revenue, or profit function and dividing them by x. You'll notice too that sometimes they'll call it unit cost or unit revenue or unit profit. The graph right below shows our supply and demand functions and then you can see equilibrium is going to be where supply is equal to demand. So the composition of a function is when you're given functions f of u and g of x and the composition is going to be where we have f of g of x or f of g of x, so there's different ways to write this, is the function of x formed by substituting u equals g of x for u in the formula f of u. So we have an example on the next page that I'm going to go ahead and circle and we'll look at this one together in class. And then the examples right below, the first one says if f of x equals 3x squared minus x and g of x equals x minus 1, find f of g of x and simplify your solution. So starting with these, you're always going to start inside and work your way out. And so the inside function here is g of x. So I'm going to write an f and then g of x we know is x minus 1. And so from here, we're going to substitute in x minus 1 into my f of x function, which I'll box up above. So every time we see an x, we're going to put x minus 1 From here we can simplify this, so we're able to multiply x minus 1 squared, and so this would be 3 times x minus 1, writing that twice, and then I'll distribute my negative here. From here we have 3 times, and x minus 1 times x minus 1 is going to become x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then distributing my 3, we have 3x squared minus 6x plus 3 minus x plus 1. And then we have 3x squared minus 7x by combining our like terms plus 4. And so that would be our final solution. The example right below this says if f of x equals and we have 5 over x minus 2 plus 4 times x minus 2. Find the functions g and h. And it says if f of x is equal to g of h of x. So you'll notice that your inside function here is h of x. And so if you look at your function that we have, which is our f of x, you'll notice that we have functions that are plugged in and you'll notice this repeated x minus 2. And so that would be our inside function. So our inside function would be h of x equals x minus 2. And then substituting in x for those, we would get our outside function, which is g of x, or 5 over x plus 4 x. And you can check this by substituting in the x minus 2 or that inside function for those x in the outside function to see that they match to that original f of x function that was given to us. So this is working backwards from what we did in the previous example.